Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach and apparently clipping through cars. <laughs> so we are following a, a car down this highway and it's amazing how fast the traffic goes and then slows down as we reach these uh, interchanges with the, the interstate. This is something that we'll probably want to look at in the future, find a way to make this move a little bit more smoothly, but for the time being, we're kind of whoa, <laughs> stuck with what we have. And uh, unfortunately, that is absolute pandemonium. That said, what we're doing today is not watching this person drive to their house. What we are going to do is respond to some of the feedback in the comments. And that feedback is about one portion of the build from the last episode. In particular, this, uh, this portion of the build. So for some reason, I saw these trenches and immediately thought, boy, this is some weird sort of smelting operation. And I don't know why I got that idea, why I got that stuck in my head. Maybe it was these weird rusted out vehicles. <laughs> but now after reading the comments, this is obviously uh, a battlefield. So today, we're gonna take this area and make it a spectacular Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, and we're gonna name the neighborhood here after this bunker area. This will be Bunker Hill. And we'll make this Veterans Memorial Park. But to do that, we're gonna to need to unlock a tile because I want to be able to really take as much of this land as I need. And we're gonna unlock this final tile out here that we're gonna to need to, to, to make this park. So. I've done a number of things off camera, which is abnormal for me, but the reason I did it is I needed to be able to unlock some assets that had relocked. So I unlocked the Disaster Memorial, which will be one of the centerpieces of the park, and we will use that to, to, to really make this feel like a spectacular place. And one of the reasons I wanted to unlock this particular asset is because, it, you know, with all the flags around there, it feels like a really unifying statue, uh, a place where you would remember a past disaster, as it says, as, as a war could be uh, could be seen as. So I needed to unleash a number of disasters on the city. I did that live. I did it all right here. So I'm, I'm a little bit curious. I haven't checked the underground view. Let's look. You can see, I, uh, there's a meteor strike and a sinkhole. <laughs> oh, and there's the earthquake. So there's some unique uh, topographic interest, I guess, in this area now that I've, I've done a couple of things like that. So just, to, just to, to, to make sure that everyone understands that that's where I'm coming from, that I, I did do a couple of things off camera. So to unlock that next tile, we need to reach our next population milestone, which we are very close to. And as I've gone through and, and, and unleashed those disasters, the populations continue to grow by a couple of hundred. So before we really get to this next milestone we need to lay out some new neighborhoods and I don't want to just continue to spread this grid over here and grid all the way across I want to have a little bit of interest and this right here piques my curiosity so what this looks like to me is a great place for some sort of national park how interesting would it be to have another park something bigger than both of these that we could use as is really the centerpiece of the city uh, another centerpiece you know we we love parks and recreation in verde beach and this would be no different so i'm going to paint a park area now we can look at the natural resources and see that you know it's trees everywhere as far as the eye can see and i don't think we're going to preserve all of this but we are going to take that rock um kind of that rock Thing that's going on over here and use that as, as, as one of the, the scenic things that people would want to see at the park. The other thing that we might do is we might look at some of uh, the other rock formations and bring those into the park as well. So if we look at this in relation to burning palms in the zoo, you can see that it's going to be as big as both of those combined. So one of the things that's going to be challenging is I'm going to need to have a road to show me where this park area is. And we'll need to adjust after the fact. And I think we're gonna do something very similar to what we, well, it's gonna be different 
but similar to what we did to form the other parks. Because there's trees everywhere, we're not going to use trees as the form, uh, the, 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 the form, the, the way we form the boundaries. I think we're going to use topography and we'll use that kind of as a guide. One thing I want to figure out right off the bat is where the park entrance would be. And I think I want there to be a diagonal entrance. So this is about where I'm going to try to meet up. So I'm just going to create a planning road and the grid will change after this road. Now we're going to have a fairly straight park boundary. There will be some following of the topography, but the topography is not that steep in this particular area. So I think the main concern that we're going to have is making sure that we're not eating up too much land. We also do have some terrain as we reach the top, so that will probably be the one place where we are constrained. So I'm gonna go through and add a road around the back of the park right now. There are other rock formations over here, so why don't we get this set up as well? Okay, so this is just going to be a park road, so I'm not overly concerned with the topography just yet. We are going to finish off our park. Okay, so this will be our park boundary. Let's take a look at this and see how well it conforms. Need to make a couple of modifications here. But this actually turned out uh, to, to line up even better than I thought it was going to. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So you might have noticed that I'm going to use a road here and I'm going to have roads throughout the entire park. Or not, maybe not through the entire park, but in main areas. So it's going to be a little bit different than our other park. And that's kind of a couple of reasons. One, I want really good fire coverage in this park. Number two, I want this to be a park where someone could go hunting if they want, just kind of to be a different type of place. Okay, and that's not perfect, and it won't be right now. <laughs> Sometime soon I'm going to make that really good when I'm working on the park. But that's not the main purpose of today's episode. The main purpose is to get our population up so we can work on our Veterans Memorial. So, I do want this to be another collector. And there's a very specific purpose for that, and I will reveal that later. <laughs> Not today, later in another episode, uh, when we're working in that park. So, for the time being though, let's work on getting our population up. And we're going to continue our grid the exact same way that we have until we reach this road, and then we're going to change things up. But truthfully, I think we're only going to build the grid over to this diagonal street. Now let's take a look at our topography here. We're going to need to mix things up a little bit in this area. And I think that's going to make for an interesting little neighborhood. So I kind of want to use the park roads to create my neighborhood boundary. And I think we're going to have a totally different grid in this area. So I don't want this neighborhood to actually connect into the park road. We're going to have a fence there in the future. But for the time being, this will do the trick. We're just doing a 10 by 20 grid, nothing all that fancy. Okay, and this is how you get some kind of wonky interchanges, or intersections rather. But that's okay. I think that we are going to be completely fine with these. We'll have one more cut into this local road that could be, it's kind of functioning as a collector. But it is a local road, so we will tee right into it and not worry too much about that. 
So this is kind of a larger area and we could use that for some city services. I like to keep a couple of these every now and then because they can be useful for those purposes. And I could have gone through and added another road here, but I don't want a junction too close to this intersection. That's the intersection of two collectors. It's going to be an important uh, junction and we should respect that about it. So let's take a look at our street naming to make sure that nothing is getting too wonky. Okay, so at this point, I think we have most of our new roads, uh, at least the roads that are extensions of existing streets named correctly. We need to name some north-south streets and our streets that change direction here, they are also a problem at this point. So I'm going to go to our my handy dandy naming list and use some of the names that you all came up with. And I, I appreciate you submitting all of these ideas. I am very, very, very happy to implement them. So without any further ado, right now. Okay, so I'm just going through to make sure that I didn't miss any. And I think, I think we got most of them. I think we're good. All right, so in this area, again, we are gonna to wanna to follow the same pattern that we've been establishing in the downtown. And that is this neighborhood right here is going to extend all the way over to, uh, to th this new avenue that we've created over here. Bring that down all the way to the railroad track. And we will extend Ocean at some point, but not a really high priority today and at a, at a bare minimum we're going to work on this higher density area it is it does have that height restriction so I guess that's something to keep in mind and I think that we are going to uh, there was a request for Randall Avenue we're gonna name this Randall tri uh, it's not a triangle uh, Randall point all right, so Randall Point would have been a neighborhood developed just off Fuego Heights. And it's, it's where we're transitioning into some of the, the still high density, but lower high density uses. So knowing that Sunset will at some point have some you know, fairly significant densities, I do think I want to be cognizant of the types of uses that I'm placing there. And actually, we're not in this neighborhood, so we're going to stay out of there. And I think that we're going to just ring the exterior of the neighborhood with offices. Now, no, no particular specialization. And again, we're going to make sure that we're backing up the railroad track with offices along this particular collector corridor. We are going to have some um, some commercial uses, and I do want to get those trails in. Now, I don't think we're going to continue the trails after we leave this grid. We'll just see what kind of a difference that makes in terms of uh, pedestrian activity. So that's one of the main reasons I like these trails is that I think that they add, I'm gonna pause this for a minute so we don't have, a lot, have to use lots of eminent domain and call mulligans. <laughs> uh, but these trails make the pedestrian network double as dense as the roadway network and I think that's a huge uh, advantage not just in the game but in, in, in reality as well you want to make being a pedestrian as attractive as possible in fact if you can make it more attractive than being a driver people are going to try to make pedestrian trips they're going to feel confident and comfortable in making those trips and I think that's really impactful and powerful same thing with a bike trip. You know, if if you have a poor bike network, you can't be surprised that nobody's using bikes in your community. And I think that that's something that people lose sight of a lot. That it, it's it's if you don't have these facilities, people aren't going to use them. <laughs> so, but if you do plan them, they will get used. It might take a little bit of time, but they they absolutely will. And this is interesting. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost wondering what it would be like 
to have some sort of facility along here and maybe it's a bike facility I'm not gonna do that right now but just something that I'm gonna mull over let me know in the comments what you think about that because we have an opportunity to potentially make a bike facility back here and some land that we can't use for other purposes but we could have a nice bike facility back here to link up some of these areas maybe make a connection within the university and get all of these people excellent off-street uh, cycling access to the university just an interesting thought okay so at this point I think that the, the main concern that I have is boosting our residential population. So this is not just for uh, unlocking tiles, but it's also because we have that oil industry that we are struggling, absolutely struggling to level up. And the main reason is we don't have enough employees. And to me that that, that is, is emblematic of a, uh, an issue with not having enough residential zoning. So we, we see that there's a need the only concern I have is a mismatch between education uh, levels and uh, you know what what we're actually going to be creating over here, which is going to be a fairly dense, uh, well-educated area. And speaking of education, we should take a look. So I'm going to once again pause this so we don't have to use eminent domain on everything. <laughs> and we're going to want to sneak some schools in here on local roads. So we're going to put at least one school there. So we have really good capacity, but our coverage is bad here. So that's why I'm placing that here. We also have very good high school availability, but poor coverage. So again, I think we're gonna put a high school on the corner of Sierra and Withers Drive. Very good. And then we're gonna need some police coverage as well. And I think we're gonna use some smaller police stations and not overdo it. I just want to be able to cover this area because you see that there's no coverage. Same thing with fire. And I, I like to place these in close proximity to one another. I think that they, they mean, there's some synergy there, so why not? Oh, I've missed some paths. So, as normal, <laughs> I will use a little bit of eminent domain and do exactly what I don't want to do and take this property for a pedestrian path, <laughs> which would never happen. But we're gonna take some liberties because it's a game and uh, I like pedestrian paths. <laughs> so, so there we go. Knocking down very, very, very tall towers for pedestrian paths. <laughs> All right, so we do not have water facilities here either. So we should think about that as well. And I think I'm gonna stub this out to, right out to the park. And I am gonna go through here knowing that this little strip of land right here is a pedestrian is a, a, a public right-of-way so I'm not overly concerned about maintaining you know perfect adherence to the grid and keeping directly under the road because really what it's what it's all about in my mind is keeping it within public right-of-way the last thing you want to do is have a water pipe that is underneath the building and we are looped and well covered. So after I unpause it, we should be good to go, but we do have a couple of other buildings to worry about. And I just wanna look and see, so we have a, a hospital over here, we have a wellness facility, we have a crematorium, a yoga uh, place, and yeah, so we need more over here. Um, we do have adequate coverage in the, in the south side of this neighborhood, but we need more up here. So again, we're gonna use Brock as kind of our main drag in this area and place some of our facilities, you know, very near there. We're gonna back our crematorium off from there though. We'll put it in kind of an undesirable area near uh, the railroad tracks. And we're also gonna want some elder care. And I think it would be nice to have elder care with a nice view of this park. This will remain undeveloped, so it would seem to be a good place for it. Next, we're gonna want a child health center. And to me, there'd be some synergy having that near, well, near uh, the clinic. We're gonna, need to re we're gonna need to rebuild that path though. There we go. So with that, 
I think we can speed this along and see what happens. We are gonna, now that I think about this, we are gonna wanna zone a little bit up here. I think we're moving into kind of urban residential uh, in, in this uh, ur urban single family residential in this area where I am not incredibly concerned about having large swaths of residential as long as it's tightly packed together. I do want to have a little bit of commercial in targeted areas so that people could go and grab a bite to eat, and go shopping, maybe have a, hit up a hardware store, things like that. So we have used Brock kind of as our, our main drag here, so that would be a, a, an okay location for it as well. And now that we're getting some uses through here, I can start to back out some of these power lines because they're just not necessary anymore. Just wanna make sure that power is still connected. It is, we are good. And I think I wanna have a little bit more residential through here just to make sure that we get some of these buildings connected. These are important facilities. We'll come back to zoning the rest of this later, but right now it's just about getting things uh, filled in a little bit. So the one thing we don't have through here at all are any parks. Now part of that is purposeful. We have a number of large parks and we're kind of banking on those carrying the weight in this area, but I don't think that we should entirely depend on those. So why don't we look at some of the park assets that we have available. So this friendly neighborhood park is a neat asset that I think we could work into this neighborhood. We'll keep that close to Brock Street again, our main drag in this area. Kind of want to see what else we have in terms of unique assets. So we have the lungs of the city as well, and I think that this is a, a wonderful building. I do not know that I want to work it in here though. I might want that to be in a little bit more prominent a location. So with all of those exhausted, I do think that we're going to want to have a few small neighborhood parks in here. A dog park in a dense area like this would be very desirable. You'd imagine that this is a fairly dog friendly city, um, as, as many are these days. And having the ability to own a dog as uh, someone living in a, in, a, in a tower would be a heck of an amenity. We also are going to want some other larger parks and I really like this particular uh, small park asset because it provides connections with trails through here. So that's something that I, I view as a, as a pretty important thing to keep, keep in mind when you're placing parks. I think we're going to have another dog park up in this area near Kalahari Street. And the benefit of this is it's going to help some of these other areas that aren't really um, doing well in terms of park coverage. And this is gonna help out immensely. So let's take a look and watch this area fill in a bit. Now, as we're watching this fill in, I did realize there was something I forgot to do. Number one, I do want to set a policy over here in terms of style, and I do want to have modern city center that's going to create a lot of pandemonium in terms of buildings being destroyed, but I think it's important that we set that early. The other thing I want to do is I want to extend this neighborhood up. So in my mind, this is now a distinct neighborhood, and this neighborhood over here, which I think we're going to call Parkside, this will also be its own unique place. And I think that that new grid helps establish that. It certainly would be developed, likely maybe a similar time frame, but just a little bit after. And you'd think that things would be a little bit different. It wouldn't feel like the same place. And I think the orientation, you can feel orientation change, at least I can. When I'm in a neighborhood, I can feel where North is. Uh, I, I, maybe not so much in the game, <laughs> but, but I can feel it. I can feel it uh, in, in reality. And the change in direction, to me, it changes the feel of a place. Maybe that's a weird feng shui thing or, 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 or whatnot. <laughs> this will be Somerset. All right. So you see things filling in nicely at this point. And this will give this area, having this policy, will give the buildings a slightly different flair, and I think it makes the transition into this area really nice. And that's what I'm really going for, is, and you can see, 
you have all of these really tall buildings and then the, the growable tall buildings and then we're starting to transition down. And this is me trying to maintain the urban transect. And I'm gonna go into that in a video in the future, but what I wanna do is make sure that there is a realistic transition between the densities and intensities of the buildings and the uses in the area. And I think that this diagonal road is gonna really serve up the, the, the ability to start to really transition down into lower density uses towards our oil industry area, which has significant uh, lower density uses, except for a long su uh, sunset, where I think we're gonna continue to maintain that density and ocean, where we will also continue to maintain that density, knowing that these are really important areas. So that said, our population is still not where we need it to be. We're just a little bit away, so I think that we are going to take a look at this area from above for just a moment until we reach our population threshold. So we're getting closer, and one of the things I wanna take a look at is some of the things happening with our traffic at this point. So we're still sitting around 80% traffic flow, which is great, but I know that as this neighborhood builds out, we're gonna have some issues. And one of the reasons for that is we have lots of issues with our stop signs and our traffic signals. So if we make this a priority road, we can go ahead toggle all these off and get stop signs along. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here on suns uh, Sunset. It is, for some reason, not a priority road. So now we have that set. Well, did not take. Hmm, interesting. So priority road there, priority road here, we're good. So now I can look at the junctions here and get these modified as well. Unfortunately, because these roads don't extend past, we're gonna have to, to adjust these in the future, but for the time being, we will make it work the way it's supposed to. Interestingly, it's not gonna matter a whole bunch because this whole uh, park complex is currently a cul-de-sac. <laughs> so <laughs> if you wanted to drive around the park right now just for kicks, you could. It's going to be a long drive. The next one we have is Bass, and it looks like I made a mistake here. This should be signalized. It's the the intersection of two collectors. And let's look at what's happening over here in the oil industry area. I think we're in a good spot. I do have this signalized. That's not really warranted. You can see the traffic is not all that bad. And over here, this is a highway. So we would certainly want people to stop there. Okay, so we're getting very close now, but we are running into a situation we, where we have a lot of commercial demand and we're not meeting it. So I think along the railroad, we are going to continue to zone commercial. Oh, and we'll hit our milestone. And this is a huge milestone for us. We finally get our airport, our cargo hub, our international, our, our international airports, some new monuments, this was what we have been waiting for for a while. We are becoming a really big city. So that's very exciting in my mind because it opens up a lot of possibilities. Again, a temporary power line. We will worry about that in the near future. And we'll kind of go and, and finish all of our zoning in this area. And since we're coming up to the park, I'm not as concerned about having some residential uses in this area. Okay, so now that we've met our, our population milestone, we'll make sure we have power over here. We are good. We have the ability to do something huge. And that is not purchase that tile. Oh, that kills me. <laughs> well... Best laid plans. <laughs> I think we're gonna purchase this tile then. And this will be where we leave off. And we might be transitioning to the 81 tiles mod a little bit sooner than I had, had anticipated, which uh, is fine. So I do wanna take sunset back a little bit here. And that is primarily due to the topography. I don't like what's happening with that. And we're gonna have a 
road that comes here into the park. So all of these little uh, craters would be places where the shelling occurred. So we want to keep those into the park if we at all can. So I don't think we're going to have a super complete park because of our tile limitation. However, we can, we can do something. So I'm actually using those trenches as my guide which I think is really beneficial in being able to keep the roads and the park lined up with really the focal point of, of the park, and that is gonna be the trenches. So in the future, I'm gonna run this road kind of parallel to the back of these trenches. We are gonna use a little bit of eminent domain here and take out this tower. We thank you for your property. The historic preservation of the city depends on it. So, <laughs> sorry about that person living in the tower. I do need to get rid of some of these road guidelines because right now I'm really focused not on the road guidelines, but on not disturbing m much more of this historical area that I need to. And again, now I'm gonna put my road guidelines back on. So there is some shelling stuff along the beach and I do think we are gonna soften that. This is gonna be outside of the park area, so it's not a huge deal. At this point, we want to make sure that we have a solid foundation for our road and it's already difficult to build in an area like this. You would figure that there would be some significant uh, engineering work that would need to, to occur to, to allow this kind of road to exist, if it could at all. You might be looking at, whoa, 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 that was not what we wanted to do. <laughs> you might be looking at some significant bridging uh, to, to be able to make this work. So what I'm trying to symbolize over here is we kind of have the pristine Verde Beach Bridge, and then we have this area over here, which is really emblematic of what took place in this area. Now I'm imagining this being an area like, you know, Normandy. Uh, or, or, or something along those lines, a battlefield uh, of great significance uh, where a number of Verde Beach residents uh, took arms and defended the city uh, during World War II or another great war of that nature. And this is a little memorial to that, uh, to that endeavor. So this is really the center of that park area so we're going to center our memorial on this so we will need to again fill in this trench this will be the only one within the park area that we fill in and we want this to be level so that we can place our disaster memorial so we're going to center the disaster memorial as best we can and that is less than ideal <laughs> so let's move this for the time being and I think we're gonna do a little bit more terraforming over here. Back this off. And I'd really like that grade change to occur before this area. Not enough soil. <laughs> okay, we're going to dredge the ocean for some soil and place it. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, I wish I had an undo button. Oh, I wish I had an undo button. <laughs> Okay, so all of that stuff I said about not disturbing this area was completely uh, and utterly false. <laughs> I am very sorry, everyone. I will do better from here on out. <laughs> okay, so now we at least have a flat pad for our memorial. And I want to soften this by the road. We'll soften the rest of it later as well. Now we can move our memorial back. And now we will soften the beach. And someday in the future when we can finish this and connect these uh, roads up, we'll have it be absolutely perfect. For the time being, we are going to, uh, I think we'll have a, a walking path to connect these and that'll do the trick. So unfortunately, it's gonna be just a little wonky and there's not gonna be a ton that I can do to fix some of these darkened areas which 
bugs the living you know what out of me but <laughs> i am kind of trapped with this because of this arbitrary line right here which is one of the main reasons i'm really looking forward to being able to I extend you know more of a i guess really really have more tiles available to me because this is really an artificial limitation obviously i'd be able to build to the beach this is this is unreasonable <laughs> so all right so we now have this this is going to kind of be our focal point i also want to you know have a place where the dead would be buried in this area so we might try to work in a cemetery in this location or two we will take out some more buildings <laughs> to make this work okay so again we are kind of encroaching upon that we are gonna need to fix that in fact I'm gonna take care of it right now so we will fill in one more shelling hole and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain from promising anymore <laughs> that I'm not going to fill things in because it's clearly desirable in certain instances. So now we have this cemetery complex right within here. And I think that that is really kind of a fitting place for it. I'm just curious what it would take to get the road over here. And it's just not going to be possible. So we will work in a path for the time being just to kind of wrap it up. If someone wanted to be able to, to walk, from one end of the park to the other, they'd be able to. Let's make this a nicer path. We'll use a city park path. And I cannot stand that junction, so we will try again. <laughs> as, I, as I always do, we'll turn angle on. There we go, nice, clean junction. That's what I'm looking for. If this isn't gonna be perfect, at least this path will be pretty darn close. So I do think that we're gonna want some some trails through this park area, but I'm thinking that we might want to do something that is a little less intrusive and maybe just have a nature reserve path through here. So that's that we need to have some sort of gate. And I think that the, the park, the small park main gate might be the most appropriate type of gate to use in this area. We'll have another one over here. After we extend our park, okay, so now we can have multiple gates to the park. And that matters to me, not because I, I want to generate revenue necessarily with this park, but because I want it to feel like it is a place. So we are gonna have gates along the park that let people in because we're gonna have pads that line up with these. And you know, I mentioned having uh, nature reserve trails through here, but I might just stick with the city park paths just for visual continuity. What I want to do is take people right to the center and the heart of this area so they can appreciate what everyone had to go through. So what, I, what that to me means is bringing people right up to these turrets, or turrets, not turrets, <laughs> and allowing them the opportunity to take a look. I love that it generated a bench there. And then I'm going to stop this right here. I don't know if I can bridge across this, but if I can, I'm going to. But I'll know right away if I'm going to demolish it. I don't want to do that at all. And I obviously don't want it to be that that tall either. Oh, I can. That's going to be great. And again, we're bringing people close to the battlefield. I think that we'll also loop around this... Uh, what, what, what appears to be a, a place where maybe a, some sort of bomb detonated. Unfortunately, take out that palm tree, but if we're going to take something out, that's what, what I want to take out. And I'm being very careful because if I take out one of, uh, one of these, I can't replace it. And the only solution I have would be to reload the save. 
So I'm gonna turn on my road guidelines here just so I can line this up really well and not have a, a crazy junction. There we go. So we've got that. And through this park, to be as respectful as possible, I'm not gonna have a lot of landscaping, at least on the inside. On the outside, I am going to place a you know, fairly significant amount of landscaping and fences. I don't love this bridge. Yeah, I might need to fix this up a little. Okay, so that was a lot less traumatic than it could have been. <laughs> so, next we're going to want one more bridge over here. And this will be the path we connect up to the main gate. Again, we want to go really close to this area without breaking it. Unfortunately, these paths are self-leveling. So you end up with some changes to the topography. So we are going to pretend that that didn't happen <laughs> because there's not a lot that I can do to fix it, unfortunately, short of using a different path type, which, you know, I could do, but I think that this is going to be the one that looks the best. And I'll leave that junction right here and call that a day. The definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing twice and expecting a different result. And I started to do that a little bit. <laughs> so we will uh, refrain from any more insanity. So in this area, we have this path. I think I just want it to extend around this monument. Okay, so now we've got this kind of walking area around here. And I do think it would be nice to along the beach. Maybe we'll make one more trail because we do have all of these bunkers right here that we are not doing anything with right now. And I do think that the complete story of the war would be being able to see all of these bunkers. And then we'll loop back around and try to meet up. I, w I really don't want to disturb this area, but I do think that this is the best area to make a connection through. So I'm going to try my best to not disturb things all that much. There we go. A nice smooth connection through here. So the other thing that I was thinking is it might be nice to have a fountain in here to commemorate uh, the lives that were lost. And that was an initially something I was planning, having a couple of different, um, you know, really uh, you know, kind of focal points within this area. So we have this, this nice, fantastic fountain here. Let's see if I can fit this in. And I think it would be a place to go and reflect. But I just want to look at the asset first to see if it fits or is inappropriate. I think it's okay. The one thing I don't love is that right now I don't see it connecting at all to this path over here. And that to me just seems completely unreasonable. So we're going to try to make one path connection. Let's see if, oh, you can. Again, we'll turn on our road guidelines so we have a nice smooth connection. There we go. So this is well integrated into the park now. We might want to have some landscaping around here, but again, if the point is to sit down in here and reflect at the, the loss that the city has, has uh, the, the, the real human toll of the battle that has taken place here, this would be the way to do it. Lastly, to make and mark this as, as kind of a solemn location, I do want to have fences throughout this park. We wouldn't want this to be a place where people just casually stroll in here because they want to visit and hang out. So I'm going to turn road guidelines on here. This is a really difficult angle to make without move it, but I think that we can make something happen. So I might just do angles, see how far we can go. Not at all. 
So maybe we'll just cut across this way. No, I don't like that either. I think we might just call it a day, have kind of a weird connection there and not worry about it. So because this won't be a paying park, I'm not overly concerned about there being gaps in the fences. If people want to, to cut through and not go through the main gates, that's totally fine. Like I've, like I've mentioned, this is really in place just to demonstrate oh, how important this place is. So we, we snap to these, uh, these areas right here. So we're, that's gonna unfortunately be something that we, we need to stop this right here so that we're not snapping and, and, and maybe making an issue where we inadvertently delete some of those. So we're gonna leave those as they are. And here again, this is gonna be land that we never develop. So even though there's nothing going on here, I'm going to ensure that no development ever occurs in this area. And I'll use my curved road tool to make a nice clean path there and then turn my angle off so that I can follow the road. Now the other thing that's really important to me is getting behind these buildings and preventing future development. So now that we have this fence here, we're going to use our last bit of eminent domain and just kind of connect up and block these areas. You kind of see that there's some shelling that occurred here anyway. We might fill in those along the property, you figure that would happen with development. And then I will follow this rear property line as I go through. Try not to demolish more than I need to. Okay, now for the most part, we just have this last little area over here that we want to fill in. So we're just going to, again, use our road guidelines and our angle tool and make some targeted connections. I think I'm gonna try to fill in the straight segments first. So it'll be a little bit easier to handle. And now for our last little challenge, it'll be this, this curved area over here. But it's not that bad. I try to follow that kind of tannish worn area when I don't have great guidelines. And you can see that that looks pretty nice. It's weird, some zoning sneaks through here. I'm not ever gonna zone in this area, so I'm not overly concerned, but it's just kind of one of those things that you notice. And I really don't like what's happening here. I think that I got a little crazy with the fences. So why don't we clean this up just a little bit? There we go. And now I'll just finish zoning right there and we are good. I did mention that I want to smooth some of the, the ground in the develop side and we are gonna do that. And I think that that's adequate. What we're gonna do now is I wanna do a bit of landscaping along the outside of this park area and along some of these properties that are facing this to give the park a little bit more privacy. Okay, now in the areas where I can't actually place a tree behind some of these buildings, I do think I'm gonna have some thick landscaping placed just behind these buildings. And for visual continuity, maybe I'll just extend that along that entire boundary with Bunker Hill. Now along the cemeteries, I do think that we're gonna want some sort of landscaping just to show that this is an after bombing area that we are showing our respect by really making it feel like a special place. Okay, so now we have some landscaping along there that makes it feel like kind of a, a unique place to visit. I want to have a little bit of landscaping around this park, but I don't want to block any of the views of the memorial itself. And then along here, I think we're gonna have some palm trees along the ocean. Uh, we're not, <laughs> because we can't. 
We'll put a couple. Okay, and lastly, I think along here I also want to have some palm trees. This is the memorial area, and I want to really kind of add a point of emphasis, a visual significance that this is the area that you're looking to. And I'll make that point with landscaping. So this would be one of the first things that you see as you're coming in to Verde Beach as well. So you come in on a boat, and you would see this park right there. Now. You can probably tell that we have a couple of issues. First of all, the name. This is certainly not Cozy Hill. Now our other significant issue is we need water and power in this area. So we are going to use a trick that I think Imperial Jedi uh, made, I guess, uh, famous in, in, in some ways. And that is, uh, I think that we're going to have to use some uh, earthquake sensors to connect power through this area. The other thing that we're going to do is we should look at our city park amenities. I would imagine having an info booth in here telling about the battle would make sense. You can look at some other park type amenities as well. So I don't think it would be totally inappropriate to outside of the park area have a couple of amenities. We want to be aware of where sunset is going to be. So I think maybe right here is the only place that we could sneak those in unless we were to take this fence down right here. It's another idea. I'm going to do that instead. We'll keep it within the park. We'll have an info booth right here. We'll have a cafe across from the park. And we'll need restrooms within the park. Ah, that's a terrible location. As you're trying to reflect on the significance of the area, there's a restroom blocking your view. Okay, so now we at least have this over here. I think it's a better location. I might actually try to add the park cafe over here. Give people a place to grab a drink of water or something along those lines. So we have these plazas as well. We could have something like that in here, but I just don't know that it makes a ton of sense. I think another park info booth and restroom would certainly make sense. So we'll sneak in a restroom by the main gate over here. And another info booth. I think that's about it. That's all that we're going to have over here. I don't think there's much need for much of anything else. So we'll connect up our water pipes. And this is where we have our issue with power. So if we take a look at our power, we've got a couple of areas over here where it's going to be very challenging to make those connections. So we could try to force it, we could run a gigantic power line and that would be gaudy and kind of bizarre. Or we could go ahead and try to add some sensors. So I'm going to look for those right now. So we have the earthquake sensor. We've got a ways to go. Huh. This is not ideal. This part always is a challenge. Oh, we're so close. Um, hmm. So I might try to move this just to see if relocating it slightly makes the connection. We're so close. And now we've broken it and don't reach anything. So I might have to have two of these, and I will put some landscaping around it just to hide it. So I don't love this, but I could see it being some sort of utility building to maintain the park. And now we've at least got our connection through here. We can landscape a bit around it. Try to hide it a little bit from the park. I may have made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> but at least while you're in the park, it just looks like some uh, tasteful landscaping along the beach. So I am very pleased with how this turned out. There's not much more that I think I could do to give this place any more significance or uh, really make it a, a more, I'm not sure what I would call it. I mean, I, I think it's 
it's a solemn place, and uh, I think that it's important to 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 keep it th that. So let's do a couple of things. We don't want fireworks in here. Um, you know, we don't we don't want to celebrate. Maybe we'll have an advertisement campaign just so that, that that in the game it looks like people are coming here. And I do kind of want to look at our other parks and see which parks are considered main parks. Yeah, we have the Hamilton Experience. That makes a lot of sense. The zoo and the forest are not main parks. That's fine. This has no policies, <laughs> so that makes sense. I think we're gonna leave this here as it is. And we've got some more work to do in this area, but we've at least honored the veterans in a way that uh, you know I think makes makes this a, a, a unique amenity in the community. I do think it seems like I forgot to landscape this area, so I might do just a little bit more. Okay, so my main thought process here is that this this really is kind of a, a, a part of the park that would have been, the, the memorial that would have been disturbed. And we want it to be private and feel like a place where you could go and, and, and mourn and grieve your loved one. And the way that you'd want to do that would be in private. So having this here gives it a little bit more seclusion, a feeling of seclusion in my mind. You're not going to be able to see it from sunset, which is going to be a very busy, very, very busy road in the future. So it's certainly, this is a unique place in Verde Beach in my mind, much different than most of the rest of the city. So I hope that you have enjoyed this build. It's a, it's a little bit different, but I'm really uh, pleased with how this turned out. And I really thank you all for leaving the suggestion in the comments to create this park area because I do think it is fitting. Um, if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, uh, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I, when I release new videos, hit that notification bell. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names here. They help me make great content just like you do by watching this video, but they also help me upgrade my equipment. And I'm going to leave this video as I usually do with a brief city tour. Thank you so much for joining me and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.